Hey there, friends out there in uh, Sega land. Um, as probably most of you know, uh, big time uh, Sega fan. Uh, my name's Max. Uh, my friends used to call me, uh, you know, the big Sega kid. I had a Sega Master System and a Sega Genesis, and I was always trying to tell the other kids to to run out and buy one. Um, sorry, something's going on with my hair all of a sudden. But uh, so I just got home from work in the gym and whatnot. But anyway, I've been seeing for the last few weeks. I've been seeing on the forums that there are a lot more people suggesting that Sega go ahead and bring out a, a new game console as though it's something that you would just put together and have it come out. Uh, and the sad truth is that most of the new game consoles cost hundreds of millions um, or even north of a billion dollars to uh, br not only bring a console to market, develop it, develop all the software libraries, port games, uh, make deals, exclusive deals with uh, third-party developers, and, of course, uh, market it. Uh, some people notice it costs, you know, $10, $20 million a year to market it in the United States or in the North American market, but it can cost hundreds of millions of dollars to market a game console worldwide. And that's just the just the TV ads, never mind movie, radio, Internet ads and so on. What could possibly work uh, has been posted somewhere else. I'm not the originator of this idea that Sega and Microsoft collaborate to bring out an Xbox compatible game console um allowing sega to uh, uh bring upscaled and much improved uh, uh genesis games but uh also more importantly their arcade games perfect arcade ports like daytona usa golden axe afterburner series some of the uh um <clears throat> virtua fighter virtua cop uh sega of course was the biggest arcade game maker back in the day with really fantastic games like Super Hang-On, Super Thunderblade, um, Space Harrier. Um, we saw tons and tons of amazing arcade games come out, Star Wars Arcade, um, that were uh, developed by Sega. And then later on, uh, Sega started making really, really good games, first for the Genesis. Um, although, uh, going back even further, I had the Master System. We had... Uh, Fantasy Star 1 and 2, though Fantasy Star 2, they 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 took that and they ported it. They were going to make it for the Master System. They had just pretty much finished the game, and then Sega management decided to uh, transfer the entire project over to the Mega Drive, uh, which is a much more powerful 16-bit system with a lot more memory and a lot more colors and, and much greater bandwidth and capability. Uh, so the Fantasy Star series and Fantasy Star Online has been a huge success also. Uh, now, Microsoft has had a really tough time with their Xbox, although it is uh, more powerful on paper, more polygons. Uh, it's the same. It's almost the same. Actually, this Xbox Series X is almost the same set of statistics as the PlayStation 5, the same 8. Uh, Zen 2 cores from AMD because they're cost effective, of course. Uh, the same um, uh, uh, computational units. Um, I think PlayStation 5 is 10.5 teraflops, and the Xbox Series X is 12 teraflops. But uh, none of that has anything to do with fun, although, you know, we certainly love pushing these systems to the limits and seeing what they're capable of. For displaying amazing immersive 3d worlds that's that's good and wonderful but if you look at a chart of the most successful games biggest selling games ever uh, pac-man super mario brothers uh tetris uh grand theft auto 5 minecraft um you go right down the list um the top 10 selling games of all time or even the top 20 30 games of all time. Um, none of them really pushed the limits of any of the systems that they were on. Uh, the graphics was not the main issue. The sound was most important and the playability was, was important. And I've never seen a game, honestly, between you and me, I've never seen a successful video game that didn't have a really great soundtrack and great sound. Uh, and Hollywood movies, uh, by the way, I work as a freelance script doctor on the side. And um, when Hollywood buys, a big studio buys an independent film, they, the first thing that they put money into is, is the sound. In fact, when 
I think the movie Paranormal is like a little sixty thousand dollar movie, um, and I'm not sure where that went. Or the Blair Witch Project, um, another sixty thousand dollar movie, huge, huge successes. Those those movies, the studios bought them and they poured a couple million dollars into the sound, sound effects, uh, redid all the audio, remastered the audio, all the voice work, and put in some type of soundtrack for those. Uh, and that's where they spent their money. They spent more money on audio on some of these movies than they spend on the special effects. Um, we're used to spending, you know, seeing movies with $200 million CGI special effects budgets, but it's, it's really the audio that's at least 10% of the total budget. And then it frequently goes up from there. Sometimes it's, it's more than half. Uh, so the same thing was true in, in world of games, audio was always neglected and it was always done kind of as an afterthought. However, um, what Sega is famous for wasn't the Genesis or Saturn games. Those games that they made a ton of money off of were arcade games like Daytona USA. All those great arcade games that, that we played as kids, or if, if you're a younger viewer, you probably don't remember any of those. Those games were really fun to play uh, against other kids and against um, random people who would show up to the arcade and you'd find out if that person could play Daytona USA or not. And of course I couldn't play Daytona USA for some reason. I just, I've been great at race games. I was terrible at that one game, but I loved it. It was one of my favorite games and Daytona USA brought back the arcades and kept them alive for a long, long time. There's still some arcades out there with that, with, uh, you know, the, the, the eight seater, uh, Daytona USA. And when I go overseas sometimes and you see some, some otherwise pretty poor countries, they still have like a, you know, a 20 year old um, arcade setup and Daytona USA is almost always there. It's, it's one of the most spectacular, funnest, simplest games, no instruction manual. You just drop into the seat, pick automatic um, and get your butt kicked. But it's so much fun drifting and so much fun uh, driving. Outrun was kind of the same thing. You didn't have to learn anything. You just jumped in the seat, um, grab the steering wheel and uh took your ferrari convertible and your con and your girlfriend and and just went for a ride and had a really really great time both of those games were based on real world experiences by the way the japanese game designers actually did go out to i think a nascar track or something like that and got into uh race cars and just drove and drove and drove all day outrun was the same thing they went all over europe all over the mediterranean and they i think they even rented a ferrari convertible and they drove around and that was how they did their research and that's why those games came out so great because they they wanted to grab you know retake that experience so when people say well why don't they why don't they bring out a, a, a console um and and my answer to that is uh microsoft has had a hard time with the japanese market because for a couple of reasons uh apparently their marketing hasn't been fantastic but the much bigger reason, the well-known reason, according to friends of mine from Japan, is Japanese tend to just buy things that are made in Japan. Um, I'm surprised that we don't do more of that ourselves in America. We buy th things that are made overseas, and we buy a ton of stuff that's made in China, um, leading to a lot of people saying that they want to slap big import tariffs on Chinese-made goods. Um, uh, but there, there's a much better solution. The solution is um, for Microsoft and Sega to collaborate and bring out an, not an Xbox Series X or even an Xbox Series S, but for Sega's hardware engineers to bring out an Xbox compatible console that still uses the, you know, perhaps the Zen 2 um, uh, really fast processors from, a, from AMD and their um, powerful computational units. Um, but to design the kind of redesign the whole system based on that architecture, work with Microsoft's engineers and bring out a new system. I thought that that what I would be willing to pay for as a consumer would be a portable version of the Xbox. Now, yes, the Xbox One S and One X, those are all tongue twisters. Those are going out right now. They're being discontinued, unfortunately. However, they're still quite powerful enough to pay, play games. Um, and they're certainly powerful enough to play some of the old arcade games, even at 1080p or 1440p. 
Uh, there are a couple of companies. I think Logitech is one that has a, an Xbox compatible portable. And I, I've always thought that a, a portable Xbox would be a really cool thing to have. The Xbox doesn't need to have a disk drive. It doesn't need to have a Blu-ray drive for it to work. You can have all digital versions of it. Uh, and the Xbox is, is fairly uh, compatible with the uh, Windows PC. I have Xbox Game Pass on my PC, and that's how I play Xbox games. And it's it's if you already have a really powerful graphics card and, and uh, an 8-core processor like I do, I've got a Ryzen 7. Uh, you can play the vast majority of Xbox games. So Xbox is more of an architecture that goes all the way back to the 90s, actually predates the, the original OG Xbox. Solution, simple, is to go to Sega's engineers, um, work with them, even provide some of the initial startup funding, some of the startup capital needed to do it. And then just go ahead and let uh, Sega's engineers come up with their own version. So AMD actually does have, for portables, AMD does have a really, really amazing 5600G, 5700G. And I think that they might or might not have the 5800G out. So what that G means is integrated graphics. Now, Intel does the same thing, and I have a laptop with that has integrated graphics, and it can play StarCraft II at 80 or maybe 90 frames per second, even with the with uh, the details, the features kind of cranked up. Um, what they're doing now is they're, they're taking the old, um, kind of got one right here. This is maybe a little too old. I have, I keep this one around as a backup. Um, these kind of low end budget graphics cards you can plug into your uh, computer and play 3D games with the settings turned all the way down. But the new, uh, processors coming in from Ryzen are not only low power, they're designed for mobile, they're designed for for phones, they're designed for laptops, because there are more laptop processors being sold now than desktop processors by far. And that type of portable uh, console could use uh, 5700G from AMD. The integrated graphics in that um, are you know, roughly comparable to maybe, uh, I would say, uh, maybe an 80 or $100 graphics card, almost a mid-range graphics card. Um, and because of the ability to integrate things in the ability to make use of unified memory, it, it does use up a lot of, of, of your RAM, but you can build a, a, a system with, uh, you know, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and you have ample, ample bandwidth, although I, I, I would, I bet you a nickel they want to go with go with DDR5 because of the higher bandwidth, but you have shorter latency with DDR4, and DDR4 is is getting pretty cheap. Uh, a 16 gigabyte module is I think $22 now online, um, and large manufacturers can get all all of those things for about half that much. So they could they could just build a, a 16 or a 24 gig version. So what you'd have is a, ultimately is a portable that would be not as powerful as the Xbox um, Series S, um, but certainly powerful enough to play maybe 80 plus percent of the games that are out there. It wouldn't be powerful enough for Forza, but you'd have a small portable design um, that would be kind of fun on the go. More importantly, from Sega's vantage point, nearly all of their arcade games from the 80s, 90s, and oddies uh, would be perfectly capable of playing even at upscaled 1440. Um, by the way, for folks who don't know, there's been some research on uh, screen resolutions and, you know, even going to 14 inches, 17 inches. Um, my monitor is uh, 24 inch. Um, and if, if I crank it up to 1440, um, it, everything looks perfectly crystal clear. And yet I can take it all the way to 2160. And you, you don't know the difference. I've, I've watched videos on YouTube that were at 1440, even on a 24-inch screen, and uh, didn't realize that I hadn't had the resolution turned all the way up. That, that once you reach that size, once you reach that uh, image density, um, you don't really notice. I mean, the, 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 the pixels, the, the graininess, the detail are so small that everything does kind of... Um, the colors and dithering do kind of blur together a little bit. 
Um, so 1440, even at that size, I think that uh, for a portable, you could get by with the 1080. Um, although the Xbox Series S, the $300 budget console, um, would do it. At, it will go up to 1440 if you need to. So portable could be 1080 or even 720. Um, and that could be powered by um, one of AMD's new mobile processors. They're, they're, they're amply fast. I mean, even the, even the small, my phone has a graphics card that's powerful enough. Um, and for a, for a console, I think that something may be a little bit more powerful than the, than the, uh, um, sorry, it's, it's, what is it? Midnight already? It's time to cut this short. Um, I think that a, a system with maybe uh, 24 or even 32 gigs of RAM, the the, the DDR4 RAM is so cheap uh, nowadays that they could build a console using less expensive components. Um, I would, I might even go a little bit further for for cost cutting and use a hard disk drive instead, or a basic solid state drive instead of sorry, never use a hard disk drive. Use a basic solid state drive instead of an NVMe drive. Um, reason being that um, solid state drives of one terabyte are really inexpensive. I know that the PlayStation 5 has a one terabyte solid state drive. It doesn't add too much to the cost of the system. Um, I didn't like the Xbox controllers at first when I looked at them and how they appeared from the outside. Now that I play this, um, I don't play anything else. This is one of the best controllers ever made in my opinion i love the way that the buttons are placed i love the upper uh left and right and the uh trigger buttons they're all in the right spot the buttons have just the right feel um it is largely based on the saturn and dreamcast controllers at least the original xbox controllers were um all the buttons are placed in the right spot um, i disagree with having the analog sticks here but that's such a trivial trivial issue that i i I feel almost embarrassed bringing that up. I love the directional pad. I love the, the placement of everything. Um, but long story short, um, if Sega and Microsoft engineers um, got together and brought out, uh, Sega were simply allowed to bring out their own kind of, I would say, mid-range console, maybe a, a little more powerful than the Xbox Series S. But whatever they think the the marketplace needs in, in Japan, I know that um, when I was in Japan the last couple of times, there's a lot of enthusiasm for really powerful, innovative new machines and what type of access accessories they want to include, like guns or, or uh, bundle packs and how they want to design the exterior. I know that the, there have been some a uh, little bit of well-earned criticism that the Xbox uh, just looks like a big kind of block compared to the PlayStation 5 and that the controllers on the Xbox... Uh, don't uh, don't hold a candle to the really cool appearance of some of the PlayStation 4 controllers, which are my favorite, by the way. Um, I think that the PlayStation 2 and uh, subsequent uh, PlayStation controllers were pretty much the ideal. So Sega wouldn't have to develop the um, hardware. Um, Sega wouldn't have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on development. They would... Um, if you bought this con this uh, console for two or three hundred dollars uh, from Sega, it would be almost as powerful, or maybe even a little bit more powerful than the ser than the Xbox Series S. Yeah, it would come bundled with um, perhaps a hundred or so really really well done uh, arcade games and Saturn and Dreamcast games, and maybe even a few Genesis games from the old days. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the value would come in from having Sega do this and having Sega just be free to, to, to bring things in on their own. We have seen some success with mini consoles, but Sega's just bringing the Genesis Mini out, even though I was a big Genesis fan. Um, doesn't plug into the Sega CD, doesn't play any of the Sega CD games, doesn't uh, support the 32X. It doesn't have any of the really cool kind of nearly arcade perfect um 32X games like Afterburner and Space Harrier, which I feel is kind of sad. Um, 
but there were there were so many fantastic games like Virtua Fighter one, two, three, and four, all fantastic games. I think um, some of those were the top selling arcade games ever, and some of the top selling uh, console games of all time in the nineties. Um, at least uh, in terms of attachment rate versus the console that they were on, and they're still really really loved games. Some of the Street Fighter two ports. Um, on Sega Saturn were much better than, than what was on PlayStation 1. Some of the um, arcade ports from third-party developers uh, were, were much better on Dreamcast. Um, and some of the early Dreamcast uh, games looked, to me, much better, much clearer and crisper than the PlayStation 2 games. But if... <coughs> excuse me. If they were freed up to, to use modern 64-bit hardware and the you know the eight core 16 thread machines if they were freed up to go ahead and, and bring out uh, some of those games and update them to 1440i I think that that would be absolutely amazing I, I we're seeing some of the Sega games go on Xbox but I think that what Sega really needs to do is is buck up and um, redevelop the assets which is kind of images sound sound effects um re-record the music remaster the music and sound effects that they that they used in those days and make uh, not just arcade perfect ports but actually upscale those ports uh daytona usa was 300 polygons per second and their resolution was about a quarter of a million pixels if i recall correctly it's less than 640 by 480. Uh, pretty low by today's standards. Versus, uh, was it 3 million, 3 million pixels on a modern monitor? 8 million, some crazy number. So we have so much greater computational power in these systems. And to be able to go back and kind of play those games, and for those who have kids, being able to share those games, having um, um, arcade... Uh, perfect arcade ports, but with higher resolution, upscaling the resolution and upscaling the colors uh, and redoing the work and, and and staying faithful to that. I think that a lot of people would see a lot of value in that, uh, especially people like me who don't buy game consoles anymore. That would be the kind of thing that I want. So if you work at Sega or Microsoft or know someone who does, who has any uh, control over that, um, I'd be willing to spend a couple hundred bucks on a game console like that, that lets me play all my old favorite games uh, that were kind of uh, abandoned during the late 90s by Sega for whatever reason. Fantasy Star, Streets of Rage, Shining Force. Um, love to play Snatcher again. That's one of the greatest all-time games ever. It was, it was on the Sega CD. The only English translation on any console was Snatcher on the Sega CD. Um, Lunar Series. Uh, one and two, uh, KO Flying Squadron, kind of a cute em up, shoot em up. Be, it would be terrific to see uh, a redone version of R Type uh, done by, you know, see some of these games done by Sega's engineers and artists, uh, play tested, and then brought out on their own console that's, that's kind of designed start to finish. Um, there was something really cool about the synergy of having Sega take their own in-house developed arcade games, have their own software developers working in-house to port those games to Sega's own hardware, even if it's Xbox compatible. Um, I, I, I think that uh, I think that that would be definitely something that the the market would bear. There's so the, the, those two big markets that Sega could reach out to. Retro gamers like myself, who would be happy to plunk down now that we're in our top earning years, happy to plunk down a couple hundred bucks for a system that already has a couple hundred or even a hundred or so um, really well done ports. Um, the Japanese market, I think, would be much more um, responsive to a Japanese designed or redesigned console by Sega, which is a, a company that's still known and trusted. Um, uh, especially in Japan, they they were really successful with the Saturn in Japan. It wasn't a success outside of Japan, but um, and uh, 
finally, even though there's the argument that, well, you can play this on computer right now, um, computers are not really set up for that. And most kids don't have uh, them. And honestly, most laptops don't even have integrated graphics. So if you're going out and traveling, even if you're going to the airport, through the airport, even if you have your laptop with you, uh, unless you have a machine that has integrated graphics in it, um, you're not going to be playing. Uh, you're not going to be playing any high end 3D games. You're not going to be playing Forza. You're not going to be playing um, even PlayStation style titles. You might be playing like uh, Solitaire or something um, not to put down. Uh, CPUs from Intel and AMD, but without at least integrated graphics, they they just don't perform. And a lot of the laptops that we sell where I work, um, really um, struggling to do anything more than just web browsing. And uh, HTML5, I think, is kind of their limit. Um, and they 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 really won't do uh, 3D graphics texturing. They won't do anything with any of the features turned on. So my opinion, Sega, uh, bring out an Xbox compatible portable um, or just as well, bring out, a, uh, bring out a game console that's Xbox compatible where you don't have to spend $500 million that you don't have to bring that out. Then you don't have to pay any of the licensing fees to anyone else. And um, we'll run out and buy those, uh, put them in the stores. Um, Shut up and take my money. I'm ready to pay for it. And make sure that my friends, I'll be just as I'll just I'll be just as dedicated and just as annoying and just as curmudgeonly uh, going to my friends today and saying, hey, you need to run out and buy a Sega because this thing's the coolest thing ever. <laughs>